Hey everyone. For this video, what I thought of doing is inviting a colleague of mine to talk about a tool that he created that is great to help anyone working with Microsoft security technologies to understand how to deploy and in what order to deploy Microsoft security technology stack. Thinking broadly from an XDR perspective, we know that we have a lot of different technologies, a lot of different domains, such as identity, uh, and then of course endpoints, Microsoft Office security technologies and collaboration technologies. And then lastly, we can also think about protecting your SaaS applications with Defender for Cloud Apps. How do we put it all together in a way that makes sense to start deploying it from scratch if you're just starting out today? Well, this is what uh, we will aim to talk about in this conversation. I structured this conversation in a two part. So this, this is the first piece and I'll be releasing the second piece following this one. So hopefully you find this interaction valuable to you. And if you do so, please make sure you leave a comment and let me know. Okay, let's get to it. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining in today's conversation. I have with me here someone from Microsoft Australia, someone who's been in the industry for decades now and would like to share some of the tools that they created for the field. So I'll let him introduce himself. Uh, Dave. Thanks, Andre. You? Tell a little bit about yourself. Good. Um, yeah, a little bit about myself, I guess. Um, ex Air Force, when it comes through it, started doing IT because I got bored in Saudi Arabia during the Gulf War. But that's another story for another day over a beer. But I guess I got into IT and then very quickly got into Citrix, VDI for quite a while, probably best part of like 15 years, I guess, on that side of things. And then sort of switched into cybersecurity a little bit later. And then from about sort of early 2018, got caught up with a partner and they asked me to look after Defender and or the Microsoft security stack uh, from about early 2018. Yeah. So I watched it from just those tiny three little ATP pieces and built up from Defender as an AV engine, etc., and out to where it is today. So. Uh, the last sort of five or six years looking after this full time, um, both from a partner perspective, then I joined Lab3, looked into some of the automation components um, and then got offered um, to join Microsoft, which was, well, this is too good an opportunity to turn down. And I guess as part of that, um, the segue of that is as a partner, you tend to provide your expertise as a cost. And so it is your secret source to a certain extent. So you tend to keep it close to your chest. Having said that, now that I'm part of Microsoft, I don't have anything really to worry about keeping it contained. I just started sharing it. And I very quickly at Microsoft started to really adopt that growth mindset that Microsoft sort of emboldens uh, and encourages. And I thought, well, I had all these links and or handy cheats and bits and pieces of how to get things done quick in the security space in the defender tooling and i quickly sort of put them into one note and the one note very quickly became unmanageable uh, dare i say it from from uh, trying to share it uh, and keep it shared and and keep it up to date so i guess last christmas i sort of had a bit of time on my hands and sort of then sat down and thought well how can i do this quicker better faster and i hit on github pages and well actually you bring up a oh yeah uh, please share yeah let, let's let's bring that up so um, i must say just... I, I love the approach you took to share this kind of knowledge because it's very procedural it follows a flow that is very we're in yeah, specialist there's, and it's technical yeah there's specialist a couple work. of things so let's just have a quick look at uh the headline there but it was all about um how to get security done it was this how do I do it? How do I make it simple? And I guess a couple of things was I was looking for a very clean, very clean screen. I didn't want anything to do with advertising or marketing. I didn't want to do anything clickbait because look, I've, I did blog, I did blogging back in 2010, uh, if not earlier than that. And I did it when I joined Citrix and I, anyway, but that's another story. I didn't want this to be advertising. I didn't want people to be distracted. I just want the hardcore pieces get stuff done because I recognize as well as the techie, we tend to have rabbit holes. We disappear down. So I didn't want to you know, detract from that. So what I've tried to do here is a uh, very sort of brief about the project. So if you want to know how it was done, how the inspiration came about from Mark's list, if you know Mark Simos, great link to check on that way. I was just trying to keep it simple, straightforward, 
Uh, I've still got a list of things to do, but I guess really key is using MarkDocs. So it's using the Markdown um, component tree, GitHub Actions Marketplace, just to make it simple and easy, and the material theme. This material theme is pretty simple. You can also make it dark if you want to. The search is really good. Um, you can also go and clone it if you want to. Uh, some authors, some assumed knowledge, just to sort of give people an idea. I'll be straight up front. My focus is on E5 and what E5 does, so I don't sort of drop back into E3. So I apologize in advance. I'm not also looking at Defender for Business. We're looking at the, the corporate and or the enterprise versions of how that works. Um, with that, I put some assumed knowledge that, look, if you haven't done the CISA workshop or if you haven't done the cybersecurity reference architecture, check that. Some general identity chips, so uh, they, uh, tips. Uh, really quick, really yep. quick note there. Uh, I did speak to about, spoke about MCRA before as well. I spoke mm -hmm. about some of these free resources that the field can use. So it's great yep. to see that incorporated into the assumed knowledge there. Yeah, it's a oh, good start. Yeah, it's a good start yep. to it. but. You build on top of it, right? So you go deeper. Yeah, exactly. Way. And look, there's some assumed licensing here where I'm calling that out. But don't forget about um, Aaron Dinich's great work for M365 Maps. Yeah, Most people uh, globally are aware of that. That's some great guidance as well. There's also some guidance here for various elements around how that works as well. Um, but SISO workshops, I guess the... The, the one key piece out of the MCRA is this one. What I've done here is colored this in a little bit, but this gives you the core components. You've got your Defender for Office, Defender for Endpoint, AAD. Uh, well, sorry, it's not AD, AAD anymore. It's Entra ID Protection, uh, Defender for Cloud Apps, Defender for Identity. This one is probably the most key. Defender for Identity is your piece that you should focus on first okay i'll cover that off in a little bit more but look this is just your real simple mud map if you like to get things started um what i then did was put everything on one page to start with and then i quickly thought look you know what i need to break this out into the top 10 to a certain extent and what i've done here specifically is load this up in the simple effective may of which one should i do first Okay, so I'm going to call out Defender for Identity as the primary tool that you need to start with. It works at your domain controller. Most cust very few customers are cloud first and cloud only. Just about every customer we talk to has a hybrid of some type or other. Okay, you're still using AAD Connect Sync, you know, all those sort of bits and pieces or, or whatever the, the latest version is that you may or may not have. Um, so this goes in, in right? Even if they've gone cloud and if they've gone into AWS, they probably have some domain controllers lying around the place. Use this. Use this as your first tool. Even going back, look, I'm, I'm telling stories ancient history now i guess in some respects 2018 is like you know we're, we're nearly six years ago okay yeah. Yeah. but when it was first called azure atp i actually went to a local isv and i installed it simply as a POC just to get them started and then when, within less than 48 hours it had identified a misconfigured server that was exposed to the internet and was being rdp brute forced from eastern europe okay great example yeah absolutely priceless yeah. okay and uh, just a comment uh, IS isv is an independent software vendor correct correct yep small isv independent software vendor sorry okay. thank, thank you, you so much for calling me out on that because in microsoft we tend to use yeah. acronyms all the time and we do have to try and sort of help make sure that we keep it nice and simple and straightforward yeah. um yeah great, look, great following... example yeah, for the value that yeah. mdi brings you and why yeah. to start with it, absolutely yeah. And look, even with a recent customer, I took a bit of a risk asking for a Dart team guy to give, do me a favor. And I actually had him look through some customers, bits and pieces. And even as we're going through that with the customer and looking and seeing what's in play, as he pointed out again, MDI is your first tool. Okay. It is the first tool that should be deployed. 
because it is your identity. And for the Dart team, this is the first tool that they'll look at making sure it gets put in, okay? Again, I've got some little comments here about a larger environment. It was, um, I won't go into any details on who the customer was or anything like that, but I would strongly recommend that they deploy that. With them, we're looking at legacy auth and he wanted to uh, block um, legacy authentication and it was like just trying to block it and i said look why don't you just put an emergency change and just block it anyway even if you don't know who's using it typical sort of story is if you block it and wait and see who screams okay yeah. it's it's um it can't be um disruptive, disruptive yeah. but it's disruptive in a good way and as it was he goes and when i recognized that this person was like quite keen to do things and get things done i said look you really should get this in because if you think there's something wrong in your environment which is what you seem to be uh you know alluding to do this and literally less it took them two weeks to get through the cab process but with less than 10 percent coverage of those dcs in that large environment up popped there was actually the NTDIS exfil via SMB exploit was coming up. That was your smoking gun. And that's when they knew they actually had a problem because this was very real, absolutely real. All of I a think sudden, it, you've got mass password reset inside the entire organization. Yeah, I, th I think it's a great example of how to measure benefits versus the risk that they're taking as well, right? So they had to think absolutely. about, oh, should we actually do this disruptively or not? And they measured a the, the risk that we're that's being posed to your environment is far greater than the disruption will impact. And and yeah, much like what you said, it triggered a yeah, environment wide password reset. So yeah, definitely a good. Yeah, good decision to do so. Yeah. All right. So once you've done that and look, what I've tried to do here is like some latest updates and bits and pieces. Again, some parts of this I still need to update a bit more all the time, but make sure your telemetry enable the telemetry first start get it done and then go back and cross check that it is actually working there's a couple of bits and pieces around here around validating and testing okay you can introduce a specific um, authentication process that should throw an alert make sure you're getting that alert make sure you're getting that alert make sure you've got someone identified as an email recipient for those alerts make sure those alerts are getting through Make sure people understand what they are. Move forward to think about SecOps and embed that SecOps methodology of how that, sorry, and SecOps security operations, okay? So there should be people who uh, uh, know what this means and should be getting the email recipients and, and make sure that these processes work in a timely manner. The one thing I can say again about MDI is I have actually been... Uh, outside of an organization they've called me in and then we've had a look and they've actually innocently said oh we did actually have a pen test going uh, late last month and I've actually then called up the MDI logs and I've gone through it I said what I can see here is they're working from these two weeks and they started here and they finished here and they said well that's amazing how did you know that and you can actually walk through the MDI log and actually see where the pen testing stops and started now that was a white box pen test in that they got handed the keys to the vpn but then they actually had free range after they got in there it wasn't a black box where you start from nothing yeah. okay but having said that if you have mdi deployed well and you have a pen test and you don't get alerted you have a problem does that make sense andre absolutely yeah and it's a great yeah. example as well the other value that mdi brings to absolutely Okay. He's coping, he's coping attackers on their tracks, moving laterally, Correct. trying to escalate yep. privileges. Okay, so this is the end of the first part, and the second part will be starting soon. Hopefully you found this informative. If you do like this kind of video and format, let me know. Like, comment, subscribe, and of course, leave a dislike if not, okay? So I'm trying to tune my content as well, but also bring in relevant conversation for professionals of the area. Hopefully you like that. All right, see you next time.